Hi, welcome back to the Box of Lights game channel. In this series, we're playing K2. This game's been a popular request, so I'm going to do this playthrough for you. So wrap yourselves up warm, sit back, and enjoy the climb. I'm going to play this one solitaire. The game's for 1 to 5, ages 8 plus, 60 minutes. And it's a different kind of game for the channel, so um, let's open the box, take a look at the contents. This game comes with a wonderful double-sided board. There's two sides. One is like the regular, and then one is a little bit more difficult. The weather's a little bit harsher. The routes up the mountain are going to be a little bit different. I'm going to play the regular game. I'm, re I'm really bad at this, so um, at least I'll give myself a bit, bit of a better chance of um, making my way to the top. So the aim of this game is that you're going to score points, and you're going to score points according to how far up you can get um, to the top of the mountain without without becoming exhausted. One good thing about this game is that it's really quick to set up and put away. Each player is going to play two climbers, so that's quite an interesting start too. You're not just taking on the role of one climber, but two climbers, and their combined scores will be your final score. And that's the same whether you're playing solo or with one player or two player, three, four or five. We'll take our two climbers and we'll place them here at base camp. I've chosen red, but there's lots of colours. There's, uh, there's purple, blue, green and yellow as well. And you get two more figures, exactly the same. And these ones are going to be placed on the right-hand side of the board here to record how far up K2 each one of your climbers has managed to climb. You'll notice that your two climbers are slightly differently moulded, so you can tell them apart. In addition, you'll get these two tents, which you'll place off to the side of the board. You're not going to use these until they come into play during the game. You're going to have two tents that you can pitch kind of part way up the mountain, and, and they kind of offer you some shelter as you're climbing. Each player will also get one of these player mats. We're playing solitaire with just the red player, so we're going to take this one and we'll put these red others back in the box. And in addition, each player will take two of these acclimatization tokens and place them on the number one spot. And you'll notice each of these tracks represents each of their two different climbers. There's also two sets of weather tiles. There's the summer tiles here, or the winter tiles here. So the summer ones are slightly easier than the winter tiles. So you can see you can kind of mix up you know, where, which side of the mountain board you'll use and whether you're using the easier summer weather or winter weather tiles. Let's go with the easier ones, right? Because <laughs> I'm rubbish. These will go back in the box, we won't need these. You can see that these tiles represent different weather. And we're going to progress along this track as time progresses. Okay, and each one of these tiles, as it's revealed, is going to give us different weather conditions. So we're going to give these a shuffle, and we're going to place them at the top of the board, up here. And we're going to deal two of them face up to form a track of six weather spaces. And the second one that we turn face up, we're going to keep on top of this deck here, just to show that there's actually just these six spaces in play. And this kind of acts like a forecast. You get a weather marker, which is this black circular block, and you're going to place it here on the first base on the left. And as we progress each turn, this weather marker is going to move along. And this weather here that's represented below the marker is the current weather. Each of these weather spaces has an altitude, this white line that goes around the altitude meter. And what it says is this weather is effective from 6,000 to 7,000 meters. Above 7,000 meters, there's no weather going on. All right, and this cloud here represents the weather. And we'll explain what these numbers mean as we get into the game. The important thing here at this stage is to recognize the fact that the weather is going on from 6,000 meters to 7,000. 
And as we climb up the mountain, on the left-hand side here, we can see at this point here is 6,000 meters. So above here, all the way up to 7,000. Then this little zone here in the middle, that's where the weather is impacting right now. In addition, each player needs to take a single deck of 18 player cards. There's a deck of 18 for each of the five colours and they've got a different shape on the back, so yellow moons, red circles. So I'm going to take the red circles and also each deck has an additional a 19th card and this allows you to rescue one of your fallen climbers and they call this the family variant. So if you want a kind of a second chance for one of your climbers, take the uh, family variant card for each one of you, but I'm going to toss this back in the box for for my playthrough. We're just going to use the basic 18 player cards and we're going to give them a shuffle. Um, and if, as you're playing solitaire then you don't need any of the other cards. So this is our deck, that's all we need to get going on the game now. Let's get climbing. To start off the first turn we're going to, well, we can, we can throw away the first player marker. We don't need this as we're playing solo. We've got a whole bunch of what these called risk tokens. We need to place these face down and we're going to select three of them at the start of this turn. Once we've finished shuffling, let's grab three. We've got a one, a one, and a one. And these three tokens are going to offer a little bit of an extra challenge for this turn. At the beginning of each turn, you're going to start with six cards. These groom ones are movement cards, and they allow me to climb up the mountain. Or with these that have the rope and two directions, they allow me to climb up or down a rope on the mountain. These are just kind of walking or climbing up the mountains. All right. This blue one allows me to add acclimatization to my climbers. At the start of your turn, you're going to choose three cards, only three cards in your hand. So I'm going to take these three here, and I'm going to keep these three in my hand. So I'll just place them face down here for now. So for this turn, for turn one, I'm only going to use these three cards. If you were playing more than one player, what you should do now is you add up the green values, the movement points. I've got three here, you see. And whichever player had the highest value would then take a single risk token. When you're playing solitaire, it's always going to be you with the highest movement value, so you're always going to take one risk token. So I'm going to play these three cards and take one of these risk tokens. They all have different numbers on, but the three that have turned up for this turn are all number one. So I'm going to take a number one risk token. The idea here is when you're playing multiplayer, you've got to weigh up getting the maximum movement out of your hand against the risk that you'll be the guy with the highest movement value and the one taking the risk. Because what this risk is going to do, it's going to have a negative impact on the effectiveness of your cards. Once we've taken our risk token, then we draw one more hidden one. So once more, we have three face up, ready for the next turn. And that's a zero, that's a good one. Once we've selected our cards and taken our risk token, we move into the actions phase. And this is when we start to play these cards. So let me start off with a simple movement. We'll take the two movement one first and we'll action this card. This card gives me two movement points. And what that means is I can move one of my climbers two spaces up or down the mountain. These are the spaces, each one of these circles. These circles here, these are going to cost one movement point. Remember, I've got two movement points. They're going to cost one movement point to climb into this space. This space here has got a number two here it's got this yellow, these yellow footprints with a number two on top. To move into this space, it's a slightly tougher climb to get from here to here. To get into this space will cost me two movement points. As you go up the mountain, you'll find there's more twos and then there's the odd three scattered around as well. So the climbing is going to be easy as we start out and get tougher as we get higher up the mountain. 
the other thing you need to be aware of is whether you're going up the mountain or down the mountain. Okay? Now the space with the carabiner at one end, like here, this, this little linked bit, this little loop, this is higher than the space where just the blank rope at the other end. Okay, so this is going up the mountain, this is going down the mountain. And interestingly here you see this is going up the mountain, and this is coming down the mountain. Up the mountain, down the mountain. Alright? So with my two movement points I can move one of my climbers, one, two. As it goes I'm not going to do that, I'm just going to move one, and the reason why is because I need to spend my risk. Now every time you take a risk you've got one of three options. You can subtract the risk, and this is one, so you can subtract one from the movement gained by one of your cars. You can subtract one from the amount of acclimatization gained by one of your cars. This car would normally give you one acclimatization, but I could use that risk there and play this card for zero acclimatization. And the third option is that you subtract this risk, in this case one, from the acclimatization level of one of your climbers. Okay, now they're both on one, so I, I can't do this here, but, you know, if this was up here at five, then I could just reduce it down to four and discard this risk. These acclimatization level tracks, they determine how well your climber is, or each climber is, acclimatized to the mountain. They start at one down on base camp, but obviously we're going to be playing cards like this one here to raise their acclimatization level, and we want to do that as they make their way up the mountain. And if these charts ever fall below one, then this is when the climber dies. Okay, so they start off low. We want to build this up. We don't want to take these risks and knock down our acclimatization levels if we can help it. So anyway, that's what I'm going to do with this turn. I'm playing my two movement. I'll reduce it by one, take care of that risk and we'll move from base camp one spot up the mountain. So that's my first card played and I've taken care of the risk and I've got two cards left. I'll play my second card for its movement and that gives me one movement and with that one movement I'm going to move my second climber to the same spot. So now I've got two climbers in the same space. You'll notice this little chart up here. There's one of these charts in each kind of level of altitude up the mountain. And this chart will tell you how many climbers can happily share the same space. If you're playing two players then you can have two climbers in this zone on each space, three players three, if you're playing with four players then only three climbers, if you're playing five players then four climbers. When you're playing solitaire you take the two player option. So we can happily have two climbers in the same space in this section of the mountain. And that's the case all the way until we get up past 7,000 feet and then we can only have one climber occupying the same space. So that's both my climbers moved. I could, if I wish, have moved the same climber twice or, or like I did, moved each of my climbers once with each card. What you can't do is, is split a card and move two climbers with one card, if that makes sense. Alright, we've got one more card left to play from our three, and that's this acclimatization card, and it has acclimatization one. And what that means is we can move one of our climbers one spot up their acclimatization level. It really doesn't matter which one I choose. So one of my climbers goes to acclimatization level two. And that's it, we're done with our actions phase. I mean the only other thing to mention, I'll grab one of these um winter weather tiles to show what I mean, but at it, it different altitudes, or different weathers, you may have to um, pay extra movement to move, you know the weather could set in really snowy here, um, um, every movement's going to cost you one more movement point. Alright, this is our current weather up here and we don't have any, any bad weather affecting us, and in actual fact the weather here is between six and seven thousand feet and we're well below that level at the moment anyway, so there's no weather for us to worry about. Next phase is acclimatization checks, and here we're going to look at this lower circle, and here we've got a blue one, which means it's positive. 
higher up the mountain we'll see red ones and these are negative and that means our acclimatization level is going to drop by one if we end in this space. For our climbers we're in a blue one, acclimatization is positive so during the acclimatization check phase we move each of our climbers acclimatization levels up by one and once more is at this stage when these red circles here so this this may affect our acclimatization check so if we were between six and seven thousand feet on this turn we would actually get a negative one due to the weather on our acclimatization level and that's it we've reached the end of turn one so we discard these three cards and this acclimatization token and we draw three more cards to take our hand back up to six ready for the next turn and we move the weather marker one spot to the right and this tells us we've got lovely sunny weather at all altitudes up the mountain no movement penalties and no acclimatization penalties I should be cautious about climbing up too far before the next turn though because it's going to be snowing and it's going to be snowing between 6,000 and 7,000 feet. That's it for now. Join me next time as we continue to climb K2.